Hi, Kevin at Ledoux Guitars. Today I've got a dual purpose video. This is another chapter in making the acoustic bass guitar. I have the neck blank here. And I thought the other purpose of the video might be to uh, show the guitar makers that are watching how I make a neck connection or specifically how I put these brass inserts in my neck tenons. Now, this video will include some very specific uh, tool items, some of which I've made, and it includes the organization of stuff on machinery that uh, many of you may not have or may not have access to. So I don't want to overkill here, but I think the purpose of the instructional portion of my video is to give the guitar makers out there some ideas about how you might go about this if you're uh, struggling with this technique or if you're unhappy with the technique you have. If you have this equipment, then I guess that's just perfect. But if not, maybe this will provide a springboard for you or give you some other ideas as to how you might go about this. So after those holes are spotted, I'm going to use these devices and there will be more equipment at the other end of the shop that we'll get to momentarily. But I'm going to use this. This is a an edge finder on this end, an edge finder here, and a center finder, <clears throat> excuse me, a center finder on this point. I'm going to use that to pinpoint those spots that I pinpointed in the tenon. After I've done that, I'm going to drill the holes necessary. I didn't put a drill bit out here because you all know what a drill bit is. Um, but after that hole is drilled, I've found from experience also that just trying to drive these inserts into that hole can be a problem. It can be difficult to do. Sometimes it'll even tend to crack that tenon, which we don't want to happen. So uh, here's where things get particular and specific. I made this tap out of tool steel. This tap matches the external thread on this insert. And this really was not as difficult to make as you might think. It's just a matter of determining that thread pitch and then turning it like you would any other thread. Uh, so this is going to be used to tap into those pre-drilled holes. After that's extracted, then this device is going to be used to drive the inserts into their positions. The insert is just threaded onto this, and this is pushed up to the drilled hole, and it's rotated, and this thing will thread itself in. And this is also done in a, in a chuck on a lathe, and both this and this tap uh, rotate in this aluminum sleeve. It makes it so that I can turn this with a 5 16 wrench it will stay centered because it's rotating in this sleeve, which is in the, in the drill chuck in the lathe. So those are the funny little devices I use. Now let's go over to the lathe and I'll show you how all of this works. This is my setup uh, for doing this operation. Uh, it is an older wood lathe. It's an old Delta Homecraft lathe. And for some reason, they would put this cross slide on some of those lathes. Now, a lot of them didn't have them, but I bought this, I don't know, seven or eight years ago because it had this cross slide. I could immediately see the potential with it. Uh, I'm not a wood turner for the most part, but this was particularly valuable because for those of you not familiar with the cross slide, this is something that you'd find more often on a metal lathe, but a cross slide allows me to move this portion of the device back and forth. This allows me to move on the, this Y axis, so to speak. And this device right here is called a milling attachment. And it's also associated more often than not with metal lathes, um, which I happen to have. I have two of these. And by putting this on the cross slide in the compound, now I can adjust this up and down by means of this knob right here. And you can see that I have 
now effectively an XYZ motion available to me. And that's what makes this whole thing possible. Now, as I said, I know this is equipment specific and the technique is sort of unique, I guess you could say, uh, but maybe it'll give you some ideas about how you can do this. So I'm gonna change scenes and change camera and show you how we go through the process. Now, the first thing I do is number one, I make sure that the edges of my neck blank uh, are parallel so that this will go into the vise very easily. This way, the center line of the neck will be perpendicular to this face plate. That's most important. We want that to be an absolute. I put this in here and by means of this adjustment nut right here, I can rotate the milling attachment and I adjust the neck so that the tenon meets that face plate head on and matches up nicely. That way I have the neck rotated up or down, whichever direction I have to go, so that now I know that the center line of the lathe is at 90 degrees to that tenon face. That's the next most important thing. So I have my neck in position. I have put a chuck in the lathe and I've put a center finder on that. And I have made this adjustment already so that you're not just waiting for me to do it. But as I bring the neck up, you can see that I'm pointed right at that mark where I want to drill. And you can center this, as you can see, this can be moved off center. Uh, you can center this by starting it. Those of you, those of you that are not familiar with an edge and center finder, um, you can start the lathe and just put a pencil up against that and it'll come to center. But even if you don't do that, I found out recently that you can do that with your fingers and you can feel that difference within about a tenth. So that's pretty darned accurate, a lot more accurate than you'll need to be even in guitar making. So I have positioned this carefully to where I want it. So my next step is gonna to be to drill this. So I've put a piece of tape on my drill to represent the depth that I need to drill into that tenon. Uh, simple enough, you could use a stop collar, but there's really no need to do that. So we're gonna start the lathe and we're gonna crank in and drill that first hole. Just that simple. backing out. Now we're going to stop the lathe and change tools. Now what's important here is that this technique works because we never move from this XY position or from this uh, Z position, I should say, um, the X or Z axis. If we do that, all bets are off. Then we've got to recenter and refine our way. That just makes things harder. So Without changing anything here, I only change tools here. So my next step was to install this aluminum sleeve into the drill chuck. Now I'm not gonna run the lathe to do the rest of this operation. I don't need to. In fact, it would be uh, too fast. It would be damaging. But by having all of this stuff mounted in the chuck, everything is lined up with that pre-drilled hole. So all is gonna go as predicted. And that is, after all, the reason for doing jigs and fixtures, to predetermine the desired outcome. And along with it, predetermine its level of precision. So I have this sleeve mounted and I have my tap that I made here. And I'm gonna bring the neck up to it. And I'm just gonna push in a little bit to give that some pressure. And now by rotating this, you see, I can make that tap drive right in there nicely. And there it goes. And the beauty of this is the lathe chuck doesn't have to turn. The tool turns within the sleeve. Um, I was doing it just in the chuck and it 
really was not as convenient because you're rotating the lathe by hand when you're doing this. So this is much, much easier. And now I can even pull out just a little bit so that I can get a really good feel of what my tap is doing. And I've just sensed there that it's bottomed out. So now I'm going to pull back a little bit and I'm just going to unscrew this thing, take it right out of there. And there, it's now, the threading part is now done. So I'm going to back away and pull out this tap. And now I'm going to switch to my threading tool here. And before I do that, I've found that it's really a good idea to get a little wax on that installation tool so that when it comes time to retract that, you've got a better chance. A uh, little piece of advice that I found a while ago online, a lot of people think that when you drive these inserts that this open end right here, if you can see that, okay, uh, it's misinterpreted that that open end is put so that you can put a screwdriver in there. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. If you put a conventional screwdriver in there, the minute you put pressure on that, you're going to break that brass right off. It's not going to work for you. As it turns out, the manufacturer intended these to clear its chips. So this is the end that goes in first. And as I said, I put a little wax on that uh, to get that to drive. So now I'm going to come back in, and this time I'm going to take my ratcheting 5 16 wrench here, just so that I can make this a little bit faster. And we're going to move right up to this, and we're going to drive this thing home. Now I drilled a quarter inch hole for this because that's what the, uh, the inner diameter of the insert showed up as being. Um, and I have just made a sort of a mistake here. I'm going to pull out. This is a ratcheting wrench. I probably shouldn't have done that. Now I'm going to put it back on, but I'm going to go back into this sleeve that I have here because if I don't, my insert may want to track incorrectly. We're loose, so now I can take this right out of there. And as you can see now, that insert is in there perfectly. After both of these are done, I'll repeat this process for the upper one. After this is done, I will soak that area in super glue to sort of case harden that area. I think it's always a good idea uh, just for security to make that joint stronger. But that's about all there is to this. I want to thank you for watching this video. If you uh, would, please put a like on it. If you have not subscribed to my channel, I hope you'll do so. Uh, I know this particular presentation, as I mentioned before, is pretty specific with respect to technique and tooling and devices. Um, and I want to say a word about tooling in general. As I've mentioned before, I advocate making your own tooling as much as you possibly can. Uh, I think it's it makes a better craftsman out of anybody that's in whatever area of craft uh, you're in. Once again, this is the Pragmatic Luther, the biggest manufacturer of acoustic guitars in the entire town of Triangle, New York.